Hi, I'm Kaylee, and today I will demonstrate to you a method of flexible collaborative grouping that you can use with your students in your classroom. This method is what I call the traffic, traffic light method. It works well for almost any age group and in any subject. The first thing that you will need to do to do this lesson is you'll need three glass jars. I got my glass jars at the Dollar Tree for a dollar a piece. So, then you take some um, acrylic paint and you just squeeze a dab into each jar and then you will flip the jar over and let the paint run down and you kind of have to swirl it to get it to cover the inside and let the excess drain out and then let it dry overnight. Then you're ready to go. That's all you have to do. Red, yellow, and green. I call this method the traffic light method because, of course, red stop, yellow slow down, green go. The way you use this is at the beginning of the school year, you'll ask your students, or explain to your students that the red stands for, I don't understand the lesson, I need you to stop and review with me. Yellow is, I understand it, but I still need some review, so slow down. Green is, I get it, let's go, I'm ready to take the test. So you would use this method by, there's two ways you can use this method actually. The first way is before you teach the lesson. So you can use it as kind of a pre-assessment in a way to group your students. You would ask your students, we'll say we're talking about fractions. How many of you understand fractions and you're comfortable with fractions and you're ready to learn fractions? If they say yes, they would put their name in the green jar. They say, I'm ready to go. Or if you don't know any, much about fractions and you knew me to teach you, you would put your name in the yellow jar. Or they may say, I don't know what a fraction is. I have no idea what a fraction is and I need you to show me everything. They would put their name in the red jar. So that's one way. You can use it to pre-assess and you can group your students based on, okay, I'm not need to teach these students everything because they don't know anything. These students say they know a little bit, so I need to start on their line and do a pre-assessment and see how much they do know. These students say they know a lot, so I may need to enrich them. Or I can use this method after teaching the lesson, based on how comfortable they feel. This is a really good way to have your students learn to take responsibility for their own actions and their own grades. So you want to stress honesty. Um, with this, the students would say, let's say I'm teaching animal habitat. You can ask the students, okay, so I just taught animal habitats. If you feel extremely comfortable with animal habitats and you're ready for the test, put your name in the green jar so they would do that. You can ask, okay, well you're not very comfortable with animal habitats, you're not ready for the test, and you still need a little help, put your name in the yellow jar. If you didn't understand the subject, you need a lot of help and you want me to help you, put your name in the red jar. And there's several ways that you can group students based on these assessments. You can uh, you could take student A from the red and student B from the green, pair them together and have them work together and the green student can help the red student learn. Or you could take the students who said I didn't understand at all and do a small group time with them and you can work with these students. The yellow students who said well I kind of understood it but I need a little extra help. You could give them an individual activity and or have them work in a small group together on an activity that they can work on without your help but will also still help them to understand the concept further. And you can enrich the green students, help them to learn even more and spark their interest. Or you could take a student from each group, pair them together and have an activity that they can collaborate on and work together with. Tip number one, I would suggest giving an interest test at the beginning of the school year just to learn what your students like to do or do not want to do or um, who will get along with who. So you can use that information to group your students so not only are you grouping students who need the help on the same level but you're also grouping students together who get along and, and can work well together. Tip two. Honesty. Stress the importance of being honest when you do your evaluations. Your student should always know that it's important to put their name in the jar that they really feel that their name should go in. 
shows to them that they should take responsibility for their own learning by placing their name in the correct jar and that this will help you to help them further. Tip three, have a safe place in your classroom for your jars as they are glass and they could easily be broken around small children. So be careful about that. You could actually use a student helper to take the names out of the jars and have them bring them to you or to place the jars out in a safe place when you're ready for them to be used. But I would suggest not leaving them out all the time. Thank you for viewing my video. I hope that you were able to take this method and maybe apply it towards your classroom. And hopefully it'll work for you because I feel like it's going to really work for me in my classroom.